Gemini, what is up, Buttercup? Welcome to your general timeless reading. Take what resonates, leave the rest. Do not force it to fit. And if you're new, welcome. If not, welcome back. My name is Jordan. I'm a master Reiki practitioner and shamanic healer, as well as a tarot reader. So check out my website for all the goodies for personal bookings, as well as your extended love readings. Okay, let's get into it. Gemini. I heard solitude, solitude. Gemini, very nice. Ooh, I like your energy. Your energy is starting to become very, I want to say relevant. I feel like you've been kind of like hiding out, like doing a lot of things just for yourself, like very secluded. There's something, surf. yeah, let's do animal spirit tarot, oracle for you, sorry. And I'll get into some tarot. But let's see what we have for you. Gemini, I feel through the hearts and the throat. It's funny, I meant to say throat and I said heart space. Um, it feels like a clearing, which is really nice. It feels like a, re I wouldn't say a release. It feels like things are just finally coming into alignment and you feel safe to really be all of who you are, which is really, really lovely. So good stuff. Let's see what we got for you, Gemini. I feel romance, a lot of romance with you. Fox spirit, think on your feet. Cat spirit, claim your independence. There's going to be a pivot in your career. Tend to the small things. I heard solitude and solace. I feel like there's a part of you that's that knows that this new beginning's coming, that it's really time to like move forward, to to take action and to build and to create. Intuitively, though, there's a large part of you that's like, hey, not yet. What you're feeling is your personal power and come into a relationship with that. Really get to know it. Don't assume. Yeah, set healthy boundaries and a rebirth is assured underneath it. With Armadillo Spirit, set healthy boundaries, which is also the manifestation of the number three. It, it breaks down to this energy of needing to find the balance between sitting in your personal power, right? Claim your independence, this cat spirit energy, which is for, right? Having that stable, firm foundation in yourself and the foundations that you build, right? Tend to the small things, mouse spirit. So it's getting into that really healthy balance of the internal world and the external world, which is why you might feel a lot of energy right now, but it's not necessarily meant to be exerted outwardly. There's a part of you that is really calling you to only exert it in a balanced manner, right? For yourself and the world around you, but balanced. You don't need to go 100 miles per hour. Um, interesting. Okay. Really, I don't use this deck often. I have a very strange relationship with, I forget what it's called. Um, Wild Unknown Tarot, I believe. I keep hearing it feels very flighty. It feels very flighty. It's, it's uh, Gemini, you, you have that kind of air about you when it comes to building things or committing to things because you love your freedom. That flightiness that people might claim you to be is actually your hesitance to commit because you know internally that you do like to, yeah, Ten of Pentacles. Uh, page of swords and the eight of swords in reverse you do like to be able to move and pick up your things and change your mind and have your hand in a bunch of different pots studying a bunch of different things and then yeah so people might perceive you as non-committal you're going through the lesson of learning what is it that i want to really commit to so if you have your hands in all these pots which one do you really want to commit to right now don't try to do all the things at once. You have the opportunity to learn and really master something with the Ten of Pentacles and the Page of Swords here and not to overthink or, or want to do all the things to prove that you're worthy in some way, right? Yeah, you're going to step into this deep mastery of not only self, but something that really speaks to you. And it's time to truly focus solely on that task, on that project, or on that uh, education or knowledge, right? With the Wheel of Fortune, there's so much divinity around you. There's a lot of like guiding you into this new stage of self. This Wheel of Fortune doesn't feel like change. 
it feels almost like this gravitational pull, like a very, hey, I, like magnetic, like I know the direction I'm meant to move in and it's starting to trust it. Yeah, but see, there's your self-doubt, daughter of wands, the page of wands in reverse, and then the empress in temperance. Empress is receptive. It's divine feminine. It's major arcana, as is the wheel of fortune. So Jupiter, Sagittarius, wheel of fortune, empress, Taurus, Libra, and Venus. And then temperance, we have, um, oh my gosh, my brain is blanking. That's okay, it will come to me. Anyway, so with the temperance card here, they're talking, so I'm getting a little, um, okay. This isn't about just the project. You're going through the process of mastering this project because there's a part of you that's gonna learn to be content with focusing on one thing and receiving your intuitive guidance and not questioning it. So you're going through the lesson of trusting yourself. I feel a lot of shame all of a sudden. Shame is very powerful. Yeah, four of swords, so there's that healing. And yeah, page of cups. Okay, so your emotional, it's really interesting. This I was about to say spiritual, and they say energetic, which tells me it's more your nervous system. Um, your emotional body is going through this learning process of I'm safe to be within myself. I'm safe to trust my thoughts and my feelings and to question them in a healthy way and discover what's true and what's rooted in old wounds or hurt or pain, uh, scarcity mindset. The queen of wands and the moon, moon's cancer. There's a part of you that wants to defend what you're doing, like explain to people in a, in a defensive way that like, I'm doing this for me. You don't have to defend it. You don't have to. Let them think what they want to think. You don't have to defend it. If you want to do it and you're confident in it and you feel safe and secure in yourself and it's of your highest good, it's healthy for you because I'm not wanting to go and be like, oh my gosh, you want to do something toxic? Yeah, sure. Screw what they think. No, we're speaking in regards to something you're passionate about that is healthy that will support your well-being and the highest good of yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit, your spirituality, your connection with your higher power, right? It, just because people don't always understand your belief system or why you want to move the way you move does not mean that it's wrong, right? The world would be a lot more community-driven place if we took the opportunity not to deem the way someone else moves as right or wrong, but just simply, hey, why do you like moving that way? Can you help me understand why that works for you? Right? That mutual understanding helps bridge the community. It doesn't mean that you need to adopt their belief or they yours. It just means that, hey, I have a deeper understanding of something that resonates with someone other than myself, outside of myself. Yeah, you don't need to hide yourself or what it is that you're doing. You're attracting the people that are in alignment with you. Gemini. It's time to mourn the relationships that you feel you have to fight to maintain. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. Queen of Pentacles in reverse. It feels like it's like a whack-a-mole, like almost beating you up to be in this dynamic with this person. You don't need to be in a dynamic that makes you feel... Let me put this by. It's up to you to choose the dynamics you participate in. If it don't light you up and it can't be fixed by anything that you do and you knowingly see somebody is not willing to really put in the consistent effort, that consistency is key, right? Toodaloo. Bye-bye. You're building a very solid foundation for yourself. It feels very career focused. You're going to realize what relationships in your life hold you back and what... And doesn't mean you got to cut them out, but maybe you're going to have to have some stronger boundaries with them to have them get to that place of understanding that they can have their thoughts and opinions, but there's a time and place. And sometimes they're just not freaking welcome. And nobody asks for them, right? Why speak such negativity? Why do it? I feel like this person is only negative or um, judgmental because they don't really like themselves. It doesn't have to do with you. So send them love, send them healing, but know that it's not a reflection of you. Yeah, closed door. It's time to move on. This is someone you've held on to for a long time. Alone time is needed and take time to reflect. Yeah, 
this is all about you going back into that solitude because you are about to move forward very quickly and build and really master something that is meant for you, right? Whether it be photography or travel or a new career path, whatever it is, there's something that you are really going to master and it's meant for you. But it's time for you to make it a priority because you choose to have a life that you love have a life that lights you up versus being in a life where you keep yourself and your passions and your desires and your intuitive not just small for the sake of the relationships no nope. your purpose is being revealed yes next level bottom of the deck so you've had this opportunity to step into this you're going to be presented with the choice to either set healthy boundaries with this person or exit gracefully right or continue down the current path and sacrifice the things that really you want to explore and do for the sake of somebody else's thoughts or opinions or how they make you feel for delegating your time elsewhere, right? It's about choosing yourself, not selfishly, but for the benefit of your own happiness, your own joy. That's not selfish. That's self-preservation, right? And learning to set healthy boundaries and making new expectations for the people we have relations with. Okay, my dear. So be kind to yourself. If you want a personal reading, check out my website down below to book there. I service globally. And if you want access to the bi-weekly love readings or you just want to check out the love reading for your sign, go ahead and check out my website. They go live on January 8th. And after that will be every other Monday. I'd love to see you there. And it's also available to purchase all of them with a monthly bundle. So check that out too if you just want access to all the zodiac sign love readings. But like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.